Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to talk about functions and their graphs. And in particular we're going to talk about graphing reciprocal functions. So uh, if you can construct a graph for a simple function like this one here, how can you use that information to ske sketch the graph of its reciprocal function? But before we get to that, let's motivate this video, let's motivate the study. Why are graphs important? Well, graphs can convey virtually complete information about functions in a, in a simple, lucid and visual way. So for example, if you're given the graph of a function, then you immediately, immediately have a lot of information about that function. And as a result, graphs are a powerful tool for understanding functions and their behaviour and the information they're trying to convey. So let's, let's build our intuition a little bit and consider the following example. Sketch the graph of this function here and hence, with that information, sketch the graph of the reciprocal function. So let's consider this function here. Now, you may be able to sketch this function straight out. If you can, then that's great, but I'm going to keep things simple. I'm going to sketch a related simpler function. So the graph of root x and I'm going to shift that curve three units to the left. If this was a minus three we take the graph of this curve and shift it three units to the right. Now I am assuming here that you can sketch simple um, the graph of simple things like simple functions like root x. Okay, so this is what the graph of root x looks like. So we're going to take this curve and shift it three units to the left. So here's the line x equals minus three. So just shifting that curve along should get something like this. Okay, so how can I use this graph to sketch the, the graph of this reciprocal function here? Well, let's make some observations about the characteristics of this graph. Firstly, you can see the domain of the function associated with the graph lies here, on this interval along the x-axis. So any x-point here will be in the domain of our function. And that's important because we can use that information for calculating the domain of our reciprocal function. So if x is greater than or equal to minus 3, then th this is basically the interval of do uh, the, the domain interval. Okay, what else do we notice about the graph. Well, you can see the graph touches the x-axis here and it lies above the x-axis elsewhere. So this means that f of x is positive for all x strictly greater than minus 3 and f of minus 3 equals 0. And what else do we notice about this graph well, it increases as we move from left to right. So we can conclude that f is a increasing function, a strictly increasing function. Okay, let's use this information to sketch the graph of this reciprocal function. And we can do that, do that in a number of ways. So from f and its graph, let's make some observations about what the graph of 1 on f would look like. Well, 1 on f will have almost the same domain, 
We do want to exclude the points though where we're dividing by zero. So f of x has a zero at minus three. So the domain of one on f will be this interval, but with the point minus three removed. So we have an open interval here. So in other words, all those x points where x is strictly greater than minus three. Okay, what else do we uh, want to put down about our reciprocal function? Well, f of x is positive, so 1 on f will also be positive because we're dividing positive by positive. We also noted that f was strictly increasing, so 1 on f must be strictly decreasing. And finally, this piece of information, f of minus 3 equals 0, well, again, we can't divide by 0 at, it, at x equals minus 3 up here. So the line x equals minus 3 will be a vertical asymptote for the reciprocal function. All right, let's use these pieces of information to sketch our curve. So here, I'm drawing in the vertical asymptote x equals minus 3. So we want the domain, the domain of 1 on f is here, not including the point x equals minus 3. The graph will be positive and decreasing. So it should look something like this. Okay, so that's... Um, that's that simple problem done. What's the bigger picture? What are some ideas that will work in general for these kinds of problems? Well, the reciprocal function has the same domain as the original function, except you need to exclude the x points where f of x equals 0. Again, that's because you can't divide by 0. If there is a point c where f of c equals 0, then the line x equals c is a vertical asymptote of the reciprocal function. So in the previous example, c was minus 3. If f's increasing, then 1 on f is decreasing. And if f's decreasing, then 1 on f is increasing. And finally, something about limits. If f of x approaches l as x approaches a, then the reciprocal function approaches the reciprocal limit as x approaches a. Okay, it's important when you watch these type of videos is that you need to understand that you learn mathematics by doing mathematics. It's dangerous to just sit there and be passive, you know, just be very passive and not, not do any maths and think, oh, I saw that video and I understand it all now. So I'm leaving you to look at the following example. Sketch the graph of this function and hence sketch the graph of the reciprocal function. Again, this is very similar to the example that I just showed you.